Thank you so much for having me here today. I'm absolutely delighted um, to have such a fabulous audience and to be able to talk about women's humor and the future of women's humor. I'm going to tell you a couple of things about the future of women's humor. The future of women's humor is going to be longer than 140 characters. That's the first thing I'm going to tell you. Because it was not a woman who came up with the line, keep it short and sweet. OK? That was not a lady. That was not a broad. Women do not do short and sweet. We do long and layered and complex and you know, multi-dimensional. When a woman comes up to you and says, I got something funny to tell you, if you're smart, you'll sit down. <laughs> you're gonna be there a long, long time, right? A guy comes up to you and says, I got something funny to tell you, you can go, go. <laughs> because he's gonna either start with, there was a woman from Nantucket, or he's going to say, three guys walk into a bar with a Dalmatian, OK? When a woman says, I got something funny to tell you, she's going to say, I was driving on 84, and I thought, let me get a coffee. You know, I'm trying to cut down on caffeine, but it's a little much because actually I'm taking estrogen now because I just went through menopause. It was sort of a perimenopause, but I've got a patch on my ass and a song in my heart, so it's fine. <laughs> and, so, and other women are coming over going, really, you take estrogen through a patch? I I'm a to allergic to latex. I can't do that. And other women are coming over, that's very bad for you. You shouldn't do that. You have to detox immediately. You have to have green tea. Only have green tea. Other women are coming over going, really, coffee? Coffee is not that bad for you. They decided it can help you with your memory. It helps again. And men are sitting there going, you said there was something funny. <laughs> One of you said there would be something funny. I'm sorry, I'm not hearing anything funny now. Because they want something they can repeat. And women are going, no, this is funny. And they're saying, what's the funny part? We're going, we don't know. <laughs> because it's ongoing. It's not a joke. Women do not tell jokes. Women tell stories, right? Women don't tell jokes, women tell stories. That's why we go on and on about things. I wrote a book with a guy who um, won two Pulitzer Prizes, uh, who's a writer for the Washington Post, named Gene Weingarten. We did a book called I'm With Stupid, One Man, One Woman, and 10,000 Years of Misunderstanding Between the Sexes Cleared Right Up. And um, Weingarten won two Pulitzer Prizes. Um, I didn't. And um, <laughs> Uh, the next book that I wrote was called It's Not That I'm Bitter. <laughs> you can understand why. And, um, but one of the things that we talked about was these differences between men and women's humor, and I can't imagine that that's going to become anything that's not going to be exaggerated in the future. Right? My female students, and I, I have the luck of lecturing to a lot of colleges and universities actually around the world, and the women that I see coming up and the young men that I see coming up are very different from how I grew up. I'm 56, and, uh, and I weigh 151 pounds. Uh, for the women in the audience, that's important uh, <laughs> to know. The 56 and the 150, and actually, because what men will come up to me especially if they've heard me talk a couple of times, women around my age, which is now too old for work study and too young for cremation. And um, they'll come up to me and say, Dr. Barreca, what size are you? You look like you're a different size from the last time I saw you, you were wearing a muumuu. Have you lost weight? And I say, this has been the same size since 1973. You know, it moves glacier-like from one end to the other, but it's all the same. And, and, but they want to know the size. And I say, I, I answer honestly, and I say, in an Armani, I'm a 12. At Dutch Dress Barn, I'm a 22W. And, um, and men don't even know what that means. Because men don't try to fit into clothing. Men buy clothes that fit them. Right? <laughs> Women try to fit our bodies into outfits. Even my beautiful young students will try to say, oh, no, I'm dieting down to a six. I'm going to be a four by my best friend's wedding. I'm going to be a sub-zero by my wedding day. Sub-zero is a refrigerator. It's not a <laughs> size. And, but they're really, they're doing this. No guy has ever said, I'm going to be a 42 short by the holidays. <laughs> 
Men, men are so confident about their ownership of the world, they wear their gene size on their behind. <laughs> Women would not do this, right? So we have differences. But you know what? Women need to start changing that world. We need to make sure that we are not changing our bodies and ourselves to fit what's out there on the rack. Life, any more than outfits, does not come pre-sized, organized, so that you have to fit yourself into it. You make sure that that stuff fits you. The same thing works for comedy. Women, what I'm hoping up for the future of comedy, for women's comedy, is that we are no longer imitating men. Right? Women are still imitating men. I'm sure that somewhere out there on YouTube is like exploding kitty litter guy. Right? That there's some guy, I have no idea if this is true, I hope it is. <laughs> but that there's some guy who eats kitty litter and baking soda and drinks ginger ale and explodes, right? And I'm sure that some girl saw that this got two million hits and is going, I could be exploding kitty litter girl. And she thinks this will get her a show like 30 Rock. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Women have to find our own humor. Our humor is different. Women still laugh in a way that's different from how we laugh when we're together than when we laugh around men. For the men in the audience, you get continuing education credit points for this. Because when we're around guys, we go, <laughs> <laughs> We do the silver bell tinkling laughter. Oh, that's so funny. And we're thinking, I have three books to read before I go home <laughs> tonight. I shouldn't have had those pretzels. I just shouldn't. <laughs> when women go, <laughs> she is not having a good time. No woman <laughs> has, at, when women are really laughing, you know this is true. When women are really laughing, we're not going, <laughs> we're going, <laughs> After a certain age, we're going, ah! Because we're looking for that extra support. There's that. <laughs> and how do you know when women are really laughing? We're going, don't make me pee in my pee. <laughs> and that's why men are threatened by women's humor. They think we leak. <laughs> Women's humor is all about breaking boundaries. It's about not being contained. That's why the word hysterical is used, right? Women are hysterical. We're always in danger of becoming hysterical. If we're too sad, we're hysterical. If we're too happy, we're hysterical. If we're too heavy, we're hysterical. If we're too skinny, we're hysterical. If we're doing anything except making a Gucci, 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 Gucci noise, we're hysterical, right? Women's comedy in the future is going to make trouble. It's going to make even more trouble than it's making now, and it's already making trouble, right? No woman can be passive and hold the mic. Women's humor is about taking control. Women's humor is about people who are not afraid to be up in front of the room, not only in control of themselves, which is already something that women are not taught to be. That's why my students, when they first come into class, the girls still talk like they don't know anything, including the ones who are going to be on the Supreme Court. So they come in and they go, Dr. Bereka, you don't look like a feminist. And I say, honey, this is what a feminist looks like. You know, tell me your name. And they go, Susie Smith. And I go, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me, you know. I mean, have authority at least over your name for God's sake, unless it's an identity theft thing. Will you please just speak in a sentence, you know? And they come in after a couple of months ago, okay, Dr. Brooker, we understand that there's a lot of reasons that women have, you know, sort of historically been pushed to the margin. It's not only women, not only because of sex and gender, which are, of course, two different things, but that's a separate lecture. You know, gender is performative, and sex is the equipment you're given. But let's just say it's not only because of sex and gender, but it's because of race and religion and any kind of otherness or difference, and that we 
Anderson if we're going to make sort of really structural sort of changes in our culture and so that we need to make them not only for ourselves but for the young men that we know because after all the straight jacket of masculinity is as confining as the straight jacket of femininity and we know that the boys have to go out there and fight their own battles but if we go out there and fight the battles for our daughters and our granddaughters and for that matter for our sons and our grandsons one thing we want to know is will we ever date <laughs> Thank you. I think it's an excellent question. And I always tell them, honey, you'll just skip that bad first marriage. <laughs> and I say, you'll skip those evenings where somebody takes you to an all-night Three Stooges film festival. <laughs> Because we don't do the Three Stooges. We understand that there are differences. It's not that those differences should be erased, but they need to be understood. The next generation who's going to go out there and make women's humor, Right? The next generation that's going to go out there and make any kind of humor is going to be even more insurgent, even more creative, even more intelligent, even more troublemaking. And I'm going to sit in the front row and I'm going to laugh. Thank you.